day 33. Just, she got. We just hiked up from Ground Creek, Groundhog Creek Shelter, and we're going to go up that way. And today's big goal is Max Patch Bald. So yeah. we'll bring it to you. I think this is called Conophilus conophilus. As I said, it's a parasite. It's parasitic on primarily oaks, which is what we got right there. And it grows seeds and dies. But well, it's pretty cool looking. And this is what they look like after they've died out. The seed, seed bearing. There's some of them starting to grow right there. They're a parasitic plant. Typically parasitizes oak oaks so that's where you predominantly find them all right the stretch before max patch running across all these spring beauties some more purple than others but they're lined in both sides of the trail beautifully very nice. All right. We're fully up on the ridge. Heading toward Max Patch. Nice little ridge walk, as you can see. Slope down that side. Down that side. Some beautiful trees here. This big red oak right there. White oak right there. It was a grueling climb to get back up here. A lot of blowdown. Hasn't been cleared. Alright. Let me get to my poles. Keep me from going too fast all right hot day sun's out and we just had some trail magic at the road a couple hot dogs pickles soda nice person there making all sorts of stuff for everybody eggs baked beans yeah. so lots of cool stuff and here's the view on the approach. There's the bald up there. But this is... Ah! I just got bit by a fly. Beautiful. I'll get you a better view from the top.
out at the top yet. Hey, right, on our way up to this is the parking lot track. Max Patch, and you get the sign not to go off trail because I guess it's well, habitat it's for rattlesnakes. What they made right here. So, yeah. So, yeah. Used to be able to camp here on Max Patch, but too many people would come up. Leave their junk coolers with beer cans and stuff. So the Park Service, or I guess it's the Pisgah National Forest, decided to put a moratorium on camping up here for a couple years. It's supposed to expire this June, but my suspicion is it'll be permanent. And it probably makes sense if that's what happens. Unfortunately, the few ruin it for the many. Alright, I'll get back to you. Up at the top. Uh, Alright. July nice. bolt. Yeah. Uh, so I wasn't passing here yet. I was Max Patch. Okay. Now you get your first chance to see me in my sunglasses. I bought them just for this trip. So I'm gonna show you the views here around Max Patch. All right, Max Patch. It's currently spelled M-A-X. Originally it was M-A-C-K apostrophe S and was originally cleared for grazing. Uh, the Park Service mows it to maintain it at a as a bulb. So it stays like this very popular spot for day hikers, as you can hear them over there chatting up. So, can't get out here on a more beautiful day. It's glorious. Uh, I hope you enjoy the views. Nice trees along this stretch. There's a nice sugar maple right there. I was going to say, after hiking snowbird and that patch along the ridge, right. this is a nice walk, walk along with some drainage. It's only about almost a little bit, just a little more than what you're sitting on to the wall. It's not much more. Okay. American chestnut trees being transplanted, or being planted here at Roaring Brook Shelter. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're going to be chestnuts 
that were crossed with blight resistant Chinese chestnuts. There's one in there. There's another one in that cage right there. I have a few of them here. But these, from my understanding, the ones that are crossed with the Chinese are, they've tried back crossing them to get out as much Chinese chestnut genetics as they can. And they got it down to like 12 or 15%. So they're like 12 or 15% Chinese chestnut. All right. American chestnut trees were an extremely important part of the Appalachian forest. It's estimated they were one out of every four trees was a chestnut tree. And uh, the way they produced nuts, chestnuts, were a very important food source for wildlife. And humans, humans go in the forest and collect them. Anyway, in the early 1900s, I believe it was 1906, not sure exact date, a uh, tree, I believe, in the botanical gardens in New York City became infected and died. And they finally determined it was caused by a fungus, uh, a fungus that was brought over uh, from Asia and it moved so quickly through the United States that the chestnuts, the American chestnuts, which weren't resistant to it because, of course, they weren't exposed to it in their history. Uh, by, the, by like 1935 or 40, all the chestnuts had been killed and there was a big rush to harnish the wood and stuff before they became uh, no more. Since then, the only time you see a, an American chestnut is a small tree that grows until a certain age when the bark starts to change and lets in the fungus and it gets killed. So you, you essentially have only small, up to like six, eight, eight year old trees that keep sprouting up. But as I just showed you, there have been efforts to cross Americans with Chinese to harness some of that fungus resistance, that blight resistance, that chestnut blight it's called. Uh, but of course, as you blend in Chinese chestnuts, you lose the genetics, the complete genetics of the American. But there is hope on the horizon. SUNY College of Forestry in Syracuse has come up with what they believe is a blight resistant tree. And they did that after determining that the fungus creates oxalic acid, which destroys the tree but they found a gene in wheat plants that detoxifies that oxalic acid so they've taken that gene and engineered it into American chestnuts and it's proving to be in testing quite effective so here we have, now we have a chestnut that only has one or two genes different than the American chestnut. Right now they're waiting for FDA and Agricultural Department approval to start uh, pushing it out. And they've tested that it doesn't affect uh, Wildlife like tadpoles and pools, and actually, the tadpoles do very well on the chestnut leaves. So, there is hope that someday we'll have American chestnuts back in the forest. Look into it on your own, pretty cool stuff.
just passing this old stump. I think it's a sugar maple. It's a good five foot in diameter. What a shame that this tree came down. Here's the trunk. Wow. Started openly. Look at these. What are these? I don't know. What are these? Uh, Anybody know? No. Nope. What these are? Looks like some kind of fern. The wind was blowing it. Okay, here comes the climb up to Walnut Mountain. See, they say 1.3, so it's even less steep. Yeah. I dreaded this last year. 4.4, Here we are. Walnut Mountain Bald. I mean, it's almost done for the day. I tell you, if it wasn't for the breeze that came up this afternoon, it'd be a scorcher. It's a scorcher now. But I gotta follow this through the bald. And slightly over the top to the shelter. Walnut Mountain Shelter, one of the oldest shelters on the trail. Oh. Long day. Close to 14 miles. <laughs> 